So I'm going to try and talk because I see the crowd seems to be a little bit between extension agents, agents, um, people that work within this industry, and then some farms. So this talk's going to be uh, either how to teach people how to create a workable system or how to do it for yourself for your own farm. Let's see if I can get this. Okay, it's working for me. So uh, I'm going to talk briefly, which we all pretty much know, but I'm going to spend a second to talk about why composting manure is what it can do. It's great stuff. Um, and then I'm going to give some different compost options. I'll talk about how you can set up a design system easily, things you need to think about before you actually start building your system. And then some things you want to consider before you even consider starting the system. Uh, because I've, uh, interestingly enough, I've had farms build compost systems for me that uh, I see them a year later and they thought, you know, I never thought about that. So I'm going to talk about that for a minute too. So generally everybody knows compost benefits. Um, certainly it improves soil health. I've become very, very passionate about compost and all it can do for soil health. Uh, and that definitely means using it in your pastures. It uh, decreases the water that you're going to need for the soil in the pastures. It helps with runoff. It's a great slow-release fertilizer soil amendment. It's a tremendous soil amendment, especially down here in Florida, where I don't care how good the soil is where you are in Florida, it's still pretty sandy. So we, we can always use some more organic matter in the form of compost. And uh, the, these things help protect the ground and surface waters, which is certainly a problem for everybody and certainly for us in Florida. Uh, and additionally, it's going to save money, you know, it can help you with re reduction of herbicides, pesticides, fertilization, and then manure hauling costs. So it can help the farm on a lot of levels. So what are the things that are needed to compost? Air, there are a few different systems, which I'm going to show you about that today. Water, think about it like a wrung out sponge. You don't want the compost pile so wet that it's dripping but so dry that it's just fluffy and flaky. It needs to really be just like a wrung out sponge. You want a carbon to nitrogen ratio about 25 to 1, 25 to 1 to 30 to 1 is about where you're going to go. Browns and greens, I'll talk about that in a little bit more time. And then time. Uh, there, there is a system I didn't mention. There is an anaerobic digestion that is a possibility. That's not really going to be the focus of today, but I will briefly show you a system where you can actually uh, do compost and create compost without air. But in general, if you have air, water, carbon to nitrogen ratio, and time, you cannot stop the process. So here's a few compost systems. Forced air, there are a few different varieties, uh, and forced air is basically you help infiltrate air into the pile without you. It's a passive air system where you're not doing anything yourself uh, uh, through air in different, different ways. I'll, I'll show you how that can work. Anaerobic, like I talked about, that's in vessel. Bin styles, you can do static air, which are air tubes. You can turn the pile old-fashioned by hand via front-end loader of the tractor. There's uh, a lot of different ways to make that work. And then windrow system, which works great, although I definitely recommend it for a larger farm just because of the size. If you're going to truly do windrow piles, you really want to have them be the size of, I like to say, like the size of a dishwasher. Um, because that's how you're going to generate heat in the pile. And if you have the piles too small, you're going to have a lot of difficulty generating the proper heat that's needed to truly compost. But all those things can be utilized. You, as a farm owner or as a, uh, somebody who is going to help get somebody to develop a system, these are things you want to think about. What's going to work best on your farm? Because what works best on your farm won't work best on your neighbors. Okay, the first one, this is forced air composting. Uh, this is an O2 compost system. It's a really great system, and I'm going to see if I can get my arrow to work for me. Uh, let's see. No. Let's see. How am I getting? Well, at any rate, the arrow doesn't want to work for me. So if you can look at the picture, the right picture, where I say the blower system down on the right-hand side and then on the, oh, excellent. Oh, there we go. There's the blower. Okay. See where the arrow is? That's a blower that you had just bought from Lowe's like $10, same thing like, you know, when you blow your, your driveway, one of those blower systems. And then these are just PVC pipes, which are put in the back of this whole system here. And what they do is they force air into the compost pile for like a minute every hour. I've forgotten the ratio. And it really does a beautiful job composting. This is another forced air system. 
same kind of thing, uh, different, different system. This is four bins. The um, other system was for three horses. This is for a five horse system. So there's a few more bins and they just use tarps to cover up. They don't have a roofed structure. You can use a tarp really inexpensively to cover up your compost to help control the amount of water flow. Again, they have the forced air and in this little bin is where they have the blower. So you can see you can make these things be fairly inexpensive or they can be fancier or nicer. It's whatever you really want. Forced air pile. This is a Green Mountain Technologies, which uh, Molly actually has a lot of information about. Uh, but this is, these are great systems. What, what happens here is this is the fresh manure that is put in on this side. And then as it, there's a turner that turns all of this from start to finish. So what ends up happening is that it forces compost as it goes. And so once it's complete, compost comes out, manure goes in and compost comes out and you don't really have to do anything else yourself. It's really simple. It works great. There's a few different systems. This is one with a larger uh, tarp on top of it. This is a smaller in-vessel system, but uh, it's open to the air. Uh, re really, it's a, it's a nice company. They have some good options. This is the in-vessel system, which I was discussing, which is without air, it's anaerobic digestion. And you actually, with these systems, they do, you can do the manure to energy option if people were considering that. That's not the focus of today's topic. But if it's something you're considering, this is a, a system that can generate that. Uh, put the manure in here. Compost is uh, a byproduct, as is methane, and that's used to uh, generate electricity. Static air composting, that's tubes that are put in each section. And within each one of these tubes, there are also little air holes burned, uh, drilled in just with a standard drill. And what this does is it, this is a passive air system. So you don't actually have to turn the pile. And it will, it will compost. It will compost more slowly than if you're turning it. But this will compost. And these air tubes help infuse the air into the pile. Uh, please like to note that the floors are concrete, which helps stop leaching and helps control the nutrient runoff. This is a great system. This is uh, somebody locally has done this herself, actually with old fence boards. Think about on a farm. Everybody has old fence boards because they're always breaking. What do you do with them? She built this system, just a, a cheap little um, plexiglass roof. Um, she bought, these are also air tubes. If you're looking at the green arrow that I'm using, by the way, uh, the arrow shows the passive air system. So, and she's very careful. I should say that uh, manure itself basically has a perfect ratio of 25 to 1. It's the things like the bedding which uh, skew the shaving, which skew the carbon to nitrogen ratio. Uh, but if you just, or if you're a careful manure picker or if you're just picking your paddocks, um, just the manure itself will, will compost very nicely because it has a great carbon to nitrogen ratio. So she does that and she puts that in here. She passively um, gets air into the system. These are removable. And the whole system she built, I think it was about $250 what it cost. This is another bin system, which is very pretty. I like this system. I really like uh, the tarp that they built because this is another great way. Tarp is very inexpensive. They put this very attractively on top of the barn, um, a great way to control the manure. And I'd like to make a point of saying, because people often say, oh, I can't put it too close to the barn because of the smell and the flies. Uh, and I'm going to show you another farm that uh, built their compost system very close to the barn. And if, if if things are being done correctly, you shouldn't have smell and you shouldn't have uh, an excess amount of flies. But again, please note that she did. there is a concrete system here to help uh, keep the leaching. And also, this bin has been built larger so that you can go in with a front end loader and that's how they get air into their pile. This next system, this actually, this farm, they, one of their farms is in New Jersey. And one of their farms is here in Ocala, Florida. Um, and you can see they have upwards of over 100 horses in the winter season. So this bin they use to put their shavings in. Uh, this bin is manure that they compost and then utilize out on the fields. And this bin, 
actually because they just have so much comp, so much manure that uh, some of that actually gets picked up and taken to a, a professional compost facility. But regardless, all on concrete surface. And this manure is then composted and turned with a front end loader. And so here's just some more bin designs. And this is because every farm is going to have a different, you know, what works for three farms will not work for 30. Uh, and, and what people want to do if you want to use a front end loader, if you want the passive air, things to consider and ask before you set up a system, sort of how I'm thinking about what I'm thinking. Uh, this is a, a bin of compost bin facility that was made after one of the program I did a few years ago. And I like what she did. If you can see, she has lattice here. And that lattice also helps to infuse some more air into your pile. And it's a great picture of the start, the middle, and the finish. And you can see how beautiful it looks once it's complete. This is another nice little bin system that was developed. And you can see the use of the tarps here that I like that also very well. This is another system that's good, but you just have to watch, because that might be better for a smaller system. Windrow composting. Great idea, but this is really, like I said, going to be for a larger farm. I'm just going to briefly touch about this. This is a windrow turner, which works beautifully, makes fantastic uh, generation windrows, but it is fairly expensive. So if you don't want to go that level, but you do want to do windrow composting, you can generate this with a front end loader. You can see in these piles that's all been turned with, a, with just the, the, the bin of the bucket of the front end loader. So how do you determine bin size? First thing you have to think about is the number of animals you have on the farm. And I'm not talking about today. I want you to consider the high number. You know, if you have three, but you think you might eventually have five or six or ten someday, I want you to build bins based on that number. That's going to be really important in making sure that you have the right size bin. This is a nice um, calculation that has been put together by Dr. Lori Warren from the University of Florida. She built, uh, she constructed this system, uh, and as you guys have this archive, you'll be able to go back and look at it. Um, she just started with two horse system. This two foot uh, cubed per horse, that's pretty much a standard size that you're just going to use for your calculations to determine the amount. And also, this 120-day bin for storage capacity. I like the 120 days. It gives you a pretty good amount of time to compost and have it sit. So these are all good numbers to use. She's only used two here, but three, four, or five, however many bins you think you might want and or need, you certainly can just put in those numbers. And don't forget, based on what Steve said, you know, you're going to have differences. You know, the pelletize, the straw, and the shavings. They're all going to compost a little bit differently and at a little bit different rates. So you might just want to think about if you're only using one type of bedding system, uh, that might affect your uh, bin size as well. OK, water for the piles. Remember I talked about a wrung out sponge. This is an important thing to think about. Plan for good bin location. Uh, certainly, you don't want to have a bin location in the lowest part of the farm. Uh, certainly, you don't want to have it at an angle, but you certainly want to have it in a place where you're accessible to water, um, either via a hose or a spray system. Uh, or my personal favorite system, uh, because I'm a big one on the reduce, reuse, recycle, if you're scrubbing your water buckets, you don't have automatic waterers, uh, and you're going to just scrub them every day and dump out the old water, why not just throw them on the manure that you've just taken out of your stall, throw that on the pile, and that will help add water to your piles. OK, correct composting ratios. Remember I talked about 25 to 1. Manure is just about the right ratio, but you're going to have other things, which I'm going to show you in just a second. They're going to really skew those results. So you want to think this. If it's brown, think of it as being a carbon source. If it's green, consider it to be a nitrogen source. Let me get a grab of water here. Hold on. OK, um, so take a look at these ratios. And, and you can add all these things, vegetable scraps, fruit waste. If you're at your house, coffee grinds, grass clippings, whatever you want. It's amazing what all can be added to this composted. Certainly, you can do just manure. But if you, you have it on your own property, why not add all your, your kitchen scraps? But take a look at uh, sawdust and wood, 600 to 1. Well, that's not even close to 25 to 1. Straw, 100 to 1. 350 to 1, and some people do bet on cardboard. I mean, these are things to think about. They're really going to change your ratios. 
But coffee grounds, 20 to 1, grass clippings, again, green, okay? Grass clippings, so that's going to help your ratios come back down. Vegetable scraps, 25 to 1, which is where you want to be. So a couple things to think about before you consider doing this. Okay, you have piles of manure that you want to get rid of and you compost them, but you're still going to have piles of compost. So what are you going to do with the end compost? I mean, if you're not utilizing it all for your farm, you need to consider that you will, you will generate piles. And I have had farms say to me, you know, I never thought about that. Um, so that's, that's a factor that you want to consider how, what's, what's going to be done with the compost once finished. You can use it all on the farm, certainly. Uh, I can't say enough of it in terms of helping ring footing, improving pastures. Uh, it's, uh, compost is actually an interesting, although lots of horse farms don't want to do it, it's actually a fantastic reused bedding, fantastic. You can set it on your neighboring properties. Um, it can really help a lot of people. You can do a lot with it. Why is that? Again, because compost is organic matter, healthy bacteria and fungi. Great for the soils, it helps maintain stable pH, slow release fertilizer. It's also helpful for removing pollutants. All these things are great for our water. And it can be marketed. I'm just going to talk on this a second. And Molly, who's next, is really going to do a great job talking about the marketing. Um, but just as a quick run over, you might want to talk to your local gardeners, nurseries, landscapers, see if they want extra flyers run a business. Again, I'm not going to get into it too much. I'll let Molly really talk about the specifics. Good selling point, you want to determine the nutrients. Extension, we can uh, get your nutrient results for you, uh, for your compost, and test your compost for you. And this is very important. If you are considering to market it to vegetable growers, um, you, you need to get a heads up on composting horse manure because there are potential residues in compost. There's an herbicide, amino pyrolid and colpyrolid. These residues will, even though you compost, it will generate all the way through the compost. And it can affect many crops, tomatoes, vegetable, uh, all kinds of vegetable crops. So Dow, Dow AgroSciences has a tremendous website for you to look at, and it gives you great answers about the specifics of that. Uh, I'm not going to get into it too heavily, but please, if you are thinking of considering it, that is, has been a problem for lots of people in the past, uh, and it is something that you need to consider before marketing it. So in review, we talked about compost. It's great. You know, I think, think I've said that enough. So when you're going to consider your pile, think about the lay of the land, number of horses you will have, not necessarily today, but your ultimate goal. Bin location. Think about legislation in the area. Uh, and then look at your bin size. If you want to do that, determine if you want to have forced air, passive air. Think what's going to work best for you. If you're going to do win row, where will you win row? Do you have enough land to do that? Uh, just think about those things before you start. Uh, and then what are you going to do with the compost once you're finished? Who's your end user if it's not all you? And here's a couple good websites for you to look at. Uh, extension.org has a lot of really good information, um, a lot of really good information to help their supporters online composting. Uh, Washington State has an excellent marketing guide. Uh, there's just a lot of good information out there to find online.